Okay, then. Um, so, uh, welcome to my talk. I think I uh, win the award for the uh, longest talk title uh, this year. So, um, just a little bit about who I am. I'm, uh, my name's Simon Frost. I'm a senior Magento developer at a company called uh, Magium Commerce in uh, York on the, the other side of the Pennines. And um, I uh, tweet and develop in various places at, under the moniker Process8. And I've been working for PHP with over for 10 years and with Magento since about version 1.4. So that's a long time. So uh, recently, my company has been working on um, some integrations where we need to handle uh, a lot of data. So in order to improve uh, performance of these integrations, I started investigating techniques for um, improving uh, PHP performance. And uh, asynchronous programming is the one which I found uh, most interesting and most promising. So in this uh, presentation, I want to share with you uh, what I found, how it helped me, and hopefully how it could also help you. So first, I want to introduce the idea of uh, asynchronicity and asynchronous programming. And then we'll move on to look at some async uh, concepts and how we can use those in PHP. And then finally, I'm going to show uh, how I used uh, asynchronous programming to improve the performance of some common uh, Magento tasks. So what precisely then do we mean by uh, async? Well, it can mean uh, many things and be implemented in uh, different ways. For example, um, Ajax is used to load parts of a page uh, asynchronously so that the user can in still interact with the page whilst uh, Ajax requests are being processed in the background. Uh, back, batch processing is another example where rather than um, the items uh, in a queue being processed uh, immediately, they are uh, added to a queue and then um, they can be processed uh, at a, a later time, um, so not immediately. And uh, in the event observer pattern, uh, events are triggered during the normal flow of execution, which can trigger other events and so on, and eventually the, um, the flow of execution returns back to the uh, program again. However, it's the last point which I think is the definition uh, we should be interested in. So these outside events could be things like uh, signals from other programs, for example, or actions instigated by the program that place uh, concurrently with program execution. And these things happen without uh, the program having to stop and wait for results. So it can mean an action which is triggered and executes in the background, uh, an action which is not executed immediately but queued for later, or a program design paradigm where the occurrence of events influences program execution. So the concept of async can be implemented in different ways, and I'm just going to introduce you to one of them. So in order to explain how uh, asynchronous uh, techniques can be used in programming, I want to uh, contrast it first with how uh, traditional uh, synchronous programs work. So at the beginning, uh, in a synchronous program, they usually follow a linear flow where a statement is issued and then, for example, it could be to connect to a database, uh, read a file, or query an API. And then the program has to wait until the results of that statement uh, are ready. And so this stage is known as blocking because, oops, sorry about that, because um, execution of the program is blocked until the uh, results are returned. Only then can the program move on and execute another statement and so on, and the program continues like this until the end of the program is reached. So in an asynchronous program, we have a more cyclical flow. Um, in the first bubble, uh, we, see from, uh, we start from the same point as the synchronous program by executing a statement. And then, however, as seen in the second bubble, uh, whilst the program is relating for the results of that statement, it can continue and execute other statements, so it's not being blocked. 
And then in the third bubble, the pro it shows that the program processes the results of these statements as soon as they become available. So the effect of this is we only need to wait for as long as the slowest running statement. And the program continues until all the results and events have been returned and processed. <coughs> so the big takeaway from the previous two slides is that um, if a program is dealing with a lot of uh, database, file, or API operations, what we can collectively call uh, input slash output operations, then the synchronous approach can be quite inefficient because the program is basically idling whilst waiting for those uh, I.O. operations to complete. So asynchronous programming aims to take advantage of the third and fourth points, particularly by maximizing CPU usage and uh, minimizing I.O. So how and why should we use uh, PHP to implement uh, asynchronous then? So I think there are several advantages to using um, PHP rather than another language or tool. So many PHP projects which implement uh, async programming use core language features to do so. So there's no need to install any special PHP extensions. And if your dev team, for example, is skilled in PHP but less so in a different asynchronous framework like Node.js, for example, then using PHP can preserve the velocity of your dev team. And so um, this is the same PHP which we're all used to and which we all work with on a daily basis. We're just using it in a different way. So there are several uh, projects out there which can help you write asynchronous programs with PHP and um, work on the goal of implementing async in PHP has now <laughs> coalesced around these uh, three projects which all have a, a basic level of uh, interoperability. And these are the most uh, stable up to date and most frequently maintained projects which I've found during my research. So now we've established the uh, advantages of async programming, uh, let's familiarize ourselves with some of the concepts we need to know. So um, asynchronous is not the same as parallel processing. Um, this is because there's no true multi-threading going on because there is no actual communication between the threads and the PHP processes. Um, Whilst that, there are some uh, PHP extensions out there like pthreads which can give you that, but uh, that's not something I'm going to be covering in this talk. So event-driven programming is one way of in implementing uh, asynchronous programming. So all events which are triggered uh, in a, a, an event-driven program have an associated callback. And so whenever an event is triggered, the event loop runs the associated callback. And speaking of which, the event loop is at the heart of the event-driven programming model. So um, long-running or blocking processes should be forked into a child process so they don't block the loop. So promises are placeholders for results which aren't immediately available. So we can use promises to uh, chain them together so that asynchronous operations can be executed in a given order, which gives us some control over the execution flow of asynchronous programs. <coughs> uh, streams are another uh, tool we can use. Streams emit events when certain conditions are met, which we can naturally subscribe to. For example, when a chunk of data uh, is ready to process, if we were reading a file, for example, when the end of a file is reached, or if an error occurs, the asynchronous program can subscribe to these events and then react appropriately. So coroutines are designed as an easier way of managing promises which avoids the use of uh, callbacks and the then uh, keyword. So in, in JavaScript, there's a thing called a callback hell, I believe, so coroutines are a way of uh, avoiding that. They are used to, often used to be able to write uh, asynchronous code in a more synchronous fashion. 
Um, not all of the libraries which I mentioned earlier do support coroutines, uh, however, so it's more of a kind of a, a preference thing. So, now that we've learned uh, a little bit of uh, theory, <coughs> let's take a look at how we can bring um, asynchronous PHP and Magento together. So I think there are a lot of tasks in Magento which could benefit from using an asynchronous approach. Um, I think uh, these uh, criteria which I listed on this slide here are subjective, um, depending on the way that um, asynchronous has been implemented and uh, which library you've used, for example. But over the next few slides, I'm going to show you some examples. So uh, for image processing, we can uh, break up a task to process a large batch of images into smaller batches, and then we can fork new processes to run each one of these um, batches. So there is no need for execute, uh, requests to be executed uh, one by one as in the synchronous model. We can then run all the batches at once, and as a result, we only, the program only runs as long as it takes to process the slowest batch of images. Um, so this does mean that it'll, if you um, trigger like um, five batches of images to be processed all at the same time, that will like, take up a, a lot of uh, resources quite immediately. So this is probably something you wouldn't want to do um, during busy times on your website, possibly something to be found out to a microservice even. So the React and uh, AMPHP projects both have uh, MySQL components which can asynchronously query MySQL databases. Uh, the AMP AMPHP component uses coroutines <coughs> to implement non-blocking database connections, whereas the React PHP library um, does not have a concept of coroutines. Instead, it uses uh, promises. So the synchronous way of uh, importing or exporting data is limited mainly by the memory you have available at the time that the script runs, whereas using the asynchronous way, it is uh, limited only by the amount of memory it takes to process one line of the file at a time. So this approach is uh, not suitable if the words in the file must be read in a certain order, for example, if we are working with configurable products. <clears throat> so for the final part of this uh, presentation, I'd like to uh, show you some real world examples of some of the suggestions we've just seen. So in this example, I'm using the React file system component to read files in a non-blocking way. And in this way, we can reduce the memory taken to load and sub subsequently uh, process CSV files containing the price data. So we've got two screenshots here. Um, the first one is a tool which is written in the standard um, synchronous way. And then the bottom one is the output of a tool um, which was written using uh, asynchronous techniques, which we've just seen. So the, the alias MR2 is just a bash alias for the bin magento command. So as you can see from these uh, screenshots, the sync version of the command used um, 54 megabytes to import the 2,000 prices, whereas the asynchronous version used uh, just 34 megabytes to import the same amount of data. So our asynchronous command has done the same work, but has used 40% less memory. So for this uh, image processing example, uh, I've used the example of uh, asynchronous batch processing. So in this example, I had an option to determine how many child threads should be used so that uh, the processes could be throttled. Otherwise, the, those processes would take up all available CPU capacity, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So in this um, command here, this is a separate command. Um, once again, the synchronous version of the command is at the top, and then the uh, asynchronous version of the command is at the bottom. 
So we can see here that the synchronous version of the command just under, took just under 13 minutes to process almost 3,500 images. And then the asynchronous version um, in the uh, bottom screenshot took just under five minutes using uh, the default three child processes and then for three minutes using uh, six child processes. So our asynchronous command is able to do the same amount of work in just uh, the equivalent of a quarter of the time. So um, let's finish our journey into asynchronicity with a, a summary of um, what we've learned. So to summarize then, um, asynchronous can help us take the same PHP code and squeeze even more performance out of it, perhaps even more than we thought was possible. However, it's certainly not a magic bullet and how much benefit you get from this will largely depend on the, the use case of what your app is doing. So I hope that you uh, found this talk interesting and useful. Thank you for listening. Uh, of course, I've got uh, time for questions, if any. And if we want to go over any part of it again. So um, this uh, tool was created using the React file system component. So it's um, part of the implementation detail of that um, component. But um, um, basically, what it's doing is that um, it's a replacement for the um, inbuilt PHP file get content method, which was used in that um, tool, and it uses it's re it's the uh, developers of a React file system come on have basically rewritten that method to use asynchronous um, programming concepts um, like beneath the hood, under the hood. So, so is, it, is it just like yield, is it only loading one line and then like yielding that line instead of loading the whole Yes, thing? so, um, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, so, um, uh, there is, a, there are generators in PHP and um, there is the yield keyword and um, it does use, the React PHP library does use the yield keyword in order to um, implement the promises and um, like you say, it will load in one row at a time, process it, and then it will load the next one into it at a time and process it again, rather than trying to load the whole thing into memory at once and then giving it back to you. Hey. Um, how would you compare this to um, the uses of uh, message views? <coughs> yeah, so um, that's one way of uh, implementing like uh, asynchronous. Um, I haven't had um, much experience with working with message queues, so I don't have a, like a, a direct example. Um, I think, like, like I said in the last slide, it depends on the use case of your app. So you might find that um, using the message queue is a, a better fit depending on what kind of data you're processing. Yeah, mm. architecture that you have at hand. Yeah, precisely. I mean, if you've got like, um, if this is running on like uh, just one um, server, then it would be a good way to uh, increase the performance of your code. But you'd have to be careful, like I say, about the uh, resource throttling. Mm. Sorry, I can't see you. The lights are a bit bright. Yeah, sorry. Hello. Hey, Simon. I wanted to ask if um, just last week Magento proposed a uh, promise uh, architecture for decoupling the Magento components for their no new microservice architecture approach. Is that what by coincidence you're giving that talk now, or if that kind of goes together nicely there? Have you had a chance to look at it? 
Uh, I've not had a chance to look at that now, uh, at the moment. No, so that is a, a happy coincidence. And, uh, yeah. Adding promises to Magento, so yeah. yeah that would be that would be really interesting, actually. Yeah. Design phase, but yeah. Mm. Okay. Hello. Hello. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thought we had a question down there, but we didn't. Any more? Ooh. Last one, I think. This one. Hey, hey. Uh, have you experienced some problems like database logs, tables? Or... Um, that is a possibility. Um, it's obviously working with the database. Um, MySQL, I believe, um, executes instructions in um, synchronous fashion. So um, what you need to be careful with there is um, how you're working with the entities which you're saving. So when I was working with the pricing part, I didn't actually um, experience any deadlocks. But then that was possibly because I was saving um, a set of prices onto uh, a different uh, product for each row of the file. So maybe it would have been different if I had uh, references to the same SKU one or more times in the same file, so that they might have appeared in like, um, like two or more processes. But um, because of the data I had in the CSV, um, that didn't happen. So that is something you have to be careful of. Yes. Um, one, I'm one more question, actually. Yeah, OK. It just came with this. Uh, have you tried to use a synchronous way in the regular floor, I mean, in the HTTP requests, not the background process? Yeah, so. Um, the reason I used um, or implemented these examples as command line um, tools is because um, with uh, HTTP, it's much more difficult to um, uh, manage the event loops. There's a lot more uh, I.O. going on. So that's why you wouldn't be able to use uh, like one Magento or two using um, uh, like the, the event-driven like uh, structure. So um, I haven't tried using it with um, doing these as HTTP requests. So my um, purpose with this project was to try and um, improve the performance of back-end um, tasks like um, API calls and things, which wouldn't usually be exposed to um, a user over HTTP. They would only be run by things like uh, maybe like a cron job on a server. OK, thank you. Okay. Very good. One more time for Simon. Okay, thank you very much.